there. All right, there we go. So three, two, and one. Uh, well, Mayor Shane, welcome back. Uh, Mayor's Monday here, WSAU, WSAU.com. I know it feels like we just talked like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, because that's exactly what it was. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when uh, one of us is on vacation and the rotation gets thrown off. So here we are today, and uh, we will certainly, uh, we'll certainly find something to talk about. We might go off the rails, but, you know, who knows? Thank you, Michael. It's good seeing you. Yes, yes. Always good to see you as well. Uh, first thing, um, one of the things that we've been talking about, uh, I, I would say it's your probably your signature project so far from your first uh, couple years plus in office. The transportation utility uh, has been passed and you are actually going to start uh, seeing some of that uh, or Rapids residents, I should say, are going to start seeing some of that on their uh, bills in the coming quarters. Yeah, you know, I was speaking with our city engineer today and you know, we're on track for the end of the month. Hopefully, uh, August bills will see a, an a nominal increase, but uh, in the long run, I think it's better to, I'd rather pay a couple dollars a month versus getting that ten to $15,000 bill for when the road gets redone by my house. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. I think there's a lot of people that would say uh, paying a couple bucks into that savings account over time is uh, a lot better than, than having to pay you for know. it all at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can uh, plan but, for it versus, you know, when you usually you get about a year notice that they're going to come mm -hmm. and do your roads. So, yeah, now it's just kind of a, I think it's easier to plan. And I don't know that we've uh, we've talked about this before when we've brought this up, but what exactly is it? Because your your city is a little unique in this way that allows you to do that because you have municipal gas and you have uh, municipal water, correct? We have municipal power and municipal water. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that so we are we're talking about the bill that you already get from the city. You know, you don't get. Right a bill from Wisconsin public service, like we do up here Correct. in, uh, in Wausau or in some areas down there by rapids you get a bill from uh, Allegiant or another company. This is actually uh, something that comes from the city. Correct. Correct. So our bills in the city, actually you have your wastewater, you have your um, water and your electricity, and then um, there's storm water on there. Cause there's, we, we have a storm water fee. And then now there'll be the transportation utility fee on that one bill every month. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for what, uh, for the typical uh, bill payer, what does that uh, then amount to uh, about every month? Well, for residential, about $2. Okay. So $2. Again, we are, we're, we're talking about putting money away in a savings account instead of uh, all of a sudden charging people thousands uh, up front, sure. which again, I, I think no matter what side of the, uh, aisle you're on that's a little easier to prepare for than uh, than the other option yeah the struggles come in for the people and I understand it you know at some point there has to be a cutoff but um, for the people that have just had road work done and they're they still have their bill and then all of a sudden we start a transportation utility and so there's a credit option kind of not option but a, a credit process where they'll be exempt from the utility paying while they're paying off their special assessment for that duration of time. So they're not having to pay twice. Mm -hmm. so and, yeah. Trying to build, build in a little fairness. It's not going to be dollar for dollar, unfortunately, but it, it will at least allow for to recognize that, yeah, they are paying for their street and they shouldn't be paying for everybody else's street at the same time. Mm -hmm. also. And, and uh, you know, and, and then in a few years, this will kind of even itself out eventually. Eventually, everybody mm -hmm. will just be paying uh, the flat rate in uh, once uh, a couple of years uh, down the road from now then, correct? Correct. And, and what we're going to do also is while these people are paying in that have had to had road work done, um, because it's all built in the budget already, so their payments coming into us, we're going to designate in a, a mill and overlay account so we can put more money into um, improving road quality on certain streets in the community that have good infrastructure yet, but the ride quality has really um, been diminished. And so we'll use those extra funds to hopefully help, you know, that'll help everybody too on improving some of our ride quality on our roads. Yeah, indeed, because obviously one of the biggest parts of your municipal budget is the uh, street work and uh, things like that. Of course, we're finding that out in uh, Stevens Point as well. 
uh, where that's going to be going to a vote, but that's a whole nother uh, set of issues right there. But you are working on the uh, on the budget for 2023. Uh, at least first look, uh, kind of first glance at uh, at some of the numbers right now. Yeah, so last year we kind of found out that we usually adopt our budget in November. Then there was quite a discussion about maybe reducing our budget. And, and so we decided that maybe it'd be a little more prudent to start the process earlier and bring in all, because our budgets usually work through our finance committee than the council. And then trying to now pull in more council members to be involved in the budget. So tonight, or, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a budget meeting at a committee as a whole for all the council members and then start that discussion and kind of seeing what their appetite is because there's some appetite not to borrow to do road work um, or trying to figure out how to do road work within our existing budget and not borrow. So some of those conversations will be happening now and, and trying to get that flushed out now so department heads can kind of work through their budget with a little more information. Yeah, indeed, because they, they really have to know what uh, what to expect early because you know, we're talking about we're not talking about a typical household budget. We're talking about uh, millions of dollars and a lot of moving parts in this. So I'm Absolutely. sure the more advanced notice that those uh, those individuals have, the better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, if there's opening in staff, you know, is this, do we have to look at not filling some positions. Uh, I'm not a, bit, a big advocate of laying people off. Um, but trying to figure out how we can close that gap if there is a gap. Yeah, and one of the uh, you know, and one of the things that all of us are are facing these days, obviously, is a higher cost to fill up the vehicles. And the city has mm -hmm. that fleet of vehicles that you have to uh, keep running, be that uh, gasoline, diesel, whatever power they run on. So that's something that I'm sure a lot of department heads, especially the uh, public works, especially the parks and rec have been uh, battling with as well is to make sure that those numbers uh, all come out even uh, this year when uh, they were definitely not expecting uh, some of the prices that we've been paying lately. Yeah, we ran into, and I, other communities I'm sure are the same, is that on our mill and overlaying our asphalt pricing, we lost a quarter mile of road due to the increase in asphalt pricing. And so, yeah, costs are not going down. Mm -hmm. And it's less work we can get done for the same dollars. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, everybody wants the best road in front of their, on their route. Absolutely. They want the best road right now. And, and right now, you know, in some municipalities, that's just, that's just not, uh, you know, it's going to happen or you have to be uh, making those plans and, and weighing one against the other. Well, yeah. And then um, we, we do a uh, pea gravel or that pea gravel to help um, with the maintenance of the road and, and hopefully extend the life of the road. And, yeah, that's, we're, we're kind of doing that right now. And mm -hmm. nobody likes to deal with pea gravel. My road was done last year and I'm still <laughs> uh, raking it out of my yard. And it's just a mess that ends up in your garage. And oh yeah, it, it, I've been told that it helps extend the life of the road. I'm not a road builder, but uh, apparently it works. Apparently, yeah, that's what we have the uh, the people in, in those other jobs for. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's certainly one thing that we'll be keeping an eye on over the next uh, few months and, and how the municipal budget process uh, shakes out. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the on the fun side of things, uh, you in Wisconsin Rapids are opening your uh, your arms, your hotel rooms, your uh, baseball facilities for uh, several events here over the next uh, over the next few weeks. And I'm sure uh, for some of those hotel uh, uh, owners and properties, it is uh, just in time. They they love to see this kind of stuff coming into town. Yeah, yeah this uh, you know we we're hosting regional um, legion, and uh, they're playing at our quadplex. Which if you haven't been here yet, it's a pretty amazing amazing place, great place to play baseball. And then um, the Northwoods League has their All Star game here, and so we're looking forward to uh, you know the, that game and everybody coming to town and and supporting them and the players and their families will be here and. It should be a great uh, couple of days around Rapids for that baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, the Northwoods League All Star Game uh, in itself, too. I mean, it's not only uh, a great event for the fans, but you're talking about uh, bringing in scouts from probably all 30 clubs as well. They're bringing in at least a uh, at least a regional scout in uh, to check out some of the talent that is going to be on display because these players, while they're they're not draft eligible this year. They will be uh, in the next couple of years, most of them anyway. Exactly. 
And so, yeah, just the opportunity for those players that uh, maybe a door will open them up, you know, open up for them and see them in the big league someday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. It's always kind of fun to say I, I knew them or I got to see them when I got to see them when I got to, you know, attend a game on a, on a $5 ticket and, and got a delicious beer floated to me down a, uh, yeah, down a, a river. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, river yeah. Much more affordable, you know, again, to me, the Northwoods league, it's, uh, it's an outdoor bar. It's a reason to get outside. Yeah, the baseball is good. Don't get me wrong. I, I like, especially when you got a team as well as the rafters are. So, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your, your rafters are, uh, are not terrible this year. Mm -hmm. I, I will give you that, but, uh, but it's always for me, it's a great night to get outside, be out of the house and, and be in what I call an outdoor bar setting. Is, is that kind of uh, how you, yeah, you know, how you've seen the rafters? Yeah, they offer a lot of great family activities and fun in between the innings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you come to Rapids, catch a game, you can come early and right at the same uh, park, you can enjoy uh, an afternoon at the water park and go catch a game. And mm -hmm. uh, so there's kind of a lot of opportunities at uh, Winter Park there and yeah, and it's uh, and they're a locally owned team as well. You've got uh, new owners there in Wisconsin Rapids, at least in the last uh, 13, 14 months, if I remember right. Yep, uh, uh, and, yep. and there's no indication right now that the team is uh, is going anywhere. You're uh, got them locked down on a lease. You've got a local ownership group there. And uh, by the way, they're also very well attended. I believe uh, ever since they've come into the league here in the last uh, 10, 12 years, they've kind of led the league in, in attendance or been close to the top. Yeah, the community area has definitely embraced them and uh, have enjoyed, uh, you know, the Raptor players, you know, taking them in, hosting, and, uh, you know, same with our River Kings hockey, you know, it's really got a pretty good following there, and um, we have some some great sports that the community can enjoy and, and the members. Mm -hmm, indeed, and and for me, uh, the history as well is pretty cool. Uh, one of the things I've learned in the last uh, four and a half, five years being up here uh, you had the likes of Tony Oliva coming through Wisconsin Rapids at one time too, uh, with the Wisconsin Rapids Twins. I didn't know there was that history there. So that uh, field at uh, at Winter Field there has seen uh, has seen some pretty pretty big names at one time or another. I spent a lot of my childhood there, is watching Twins games, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and that's that's the uh, that's a great part of it uh, as well. Your uh, favorite. Uh, Favorite memory there of uh, of Witter Field? Yeah. So far. a lot of mine. We had days. fun shaking foul balls, my buddies and I. Because I, I think, if I recall right, I think they paid us fifty cents a ball, so we thought that was a big deal. So fifty. Okay. We're always running crazy trying to get foul balls. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good rate. Even yeah, and get, you know, get triggered then. up and go home. You know. Indeed, indeed. And then some days you maybe drink out of the water fountain instead and of a player. His name is uh, Mo Hill, and I always remember. Mo Hill's name being called through the stands and uh, he's kind of icon legend here. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I've got some of those memories. Indeed. Well, we appreciate the time, uh, Mayor Shane. We'll look forward to, uh, to chatting again next month. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael.